everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast. This is episode 173 and conspicuous by his absence this week, as you can tell, since I am opening the show. Uh, Larry has decided that uh, he had better things to do this week. Um, so I have uh, my good friend Charlie here, who has been on the show before, joining me in Larry's place. Charlie, how are you? Not bad. Um, it's time for my semi-annual appearance, I guess. Wait, one fifty. Yeah, okay. So I'm early for once. Yeah. So, and, and you know what? It, it it's great to have you, and it's always great to show um your representation of um of uh, the hashtag uh, VB sucks um from our virtual oh, boy uh, our pound VB sucks. And I just wanted to show this really quickly because um, Larry, as we're recording this, Larry is attending WWE Raw in Long Island. And a friend of mine who watches the podcast and listens to the podcast sent me a text. And he said, hey, he's like, is this Larry? So Larry made it to television this week on WWE Raw. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, that looks like, yeah, that's him. There he is. No. Nice and newly shaven. No, that can't possibly be him. Nope, that's him. The the Yeah, see, a clean shaven Larry takes years off his life. Uh, yeah, he was better. You liked him better with the beard. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So uh, so Larry Larry is doing the wrestling thing this week. So Charlie, thank you so much for stepping in to do the video game thing with me. Well, thank you for having me. It's not like I'm doing anything else since I gave birth to Alfonso the app the appendix three weeks ago, and I'm still recuperating. Uh, did you did you name him Alfonso? Yeah, actually, a friend of mine named it because you know my prior life you know i was in 16 years of ems so i have a very warped sense of humor along with friends that approach that so my appendix's name was alfonso and my aortic aneurysm is named algernon based on the book do, nice do your home by yourself yes and, uh, and i know um you are it's not, it's not, i have to go with the alliteration so well, that makes sense and i think um uh, you um you and your wife christine who i'm also really good friends with uh, are probably the most avid readers that I know um, outside of, uh, yeah, no, the most avid readers I know. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> oh, oh your, your niece is catching up. She just got yelled at because she was supposed to go to be asleep at 730 and she's still up reading books. Wow. All right. You know what? Yeah. That's not, not a bad just, problem to have. No, she didn't. She just turned eight on set this past Friday. And um, I can't yell at her because she has some of my bad habits to include having to read something while sitting at the dinner table. And wow. my parents used to yell at me all the time when I did that. So, you know, wow. it's one of those angry or do I just let it go? Or it's like, it's, it's, it's a catch 22. All right. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to discipline. Uh, I would assume, cause I don't have any kids, uh, that it's hard to discipline a kid when they're, when they're doing something good, but just at the wrong time. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and she is, and she is my little retro gamer. Also, she likes playing her old games. She loves her Mario. Actually, her favorite um, franchise is Kirby. Oh, she likes Kirby. Okay, well, that, I, I can understand that. Yeah, she likes characters that eat things. She does. She does keep asking to play the original Legend of Zelda. Not quite sure if she's ready for it, but she just watches me play it instead. Okay. Well, I bet you. I bet you she picks up more than you realize. So it may be time soon to. You know, let her have a crack at it. Dangerous for her to go alone, so she'll take that. Ah, very true. Yeah, just don't have her run around your house with a sword. Uh, that could be dangerous. Uh, uh, too late. She uh, has her own sword. And sword. You've seen well, the pictures. That's very true. Well, you know what? And uh, and you know what? You're still you're still around. I hope Christine is still around, and everything is safe. <laughs> the cats are. Around. I'm sure one of them will come and join later. Oh yeah, I know. My uh, my cats love to join. Uh, it's like as soon as I start podcasting, uh, they take that as a okay. as a clue to just come join. So um, of course, those cats are assholes. Yeah, exactly. So um, so let's jump into the topic for this week. So I was trying to come up with something, uh, you know, for uh, for you and me that was uh, that was different, something we haven't done before. And when we're when you get to 173 episodes, it's hard to kind of figure out. It's like, what what haven't we really covered? And this is a topic well, that also, this is the ahead. first time I'm on with you instead of Larry. So gotta do something different. Oh, yeah, that you know what, that's true. I forgot. Usually you're filling in for me, not not the other way around. We did episode 94 was the handheld special 
Uh, 100 was, you know, the 100th episode. And the 150, I don't remember what we did for 150. Something else, I don't remember. But, oh. no. It's, it's like I show up every 50 episodes, so it turns out to like mean once a, a yearly appearance. All right. Well, you're a little, you're like you said, you're a little early this year, which is good. Oh, actually, yeah, I think the the first time I was on the show with you was for the 150 because the three of us were on. No, I so, think it was the hundredth. But either way, oh well, if, well, the if you want to go back and listen. Mm-hmm. So I think for this episode, um, you know, the the concept we came up with is um, we've never talked at length about video game music. We bring it up every once in a while as we're talking about different topics and everything like that, but we've never really given um, video game music like its own little episode. And after I brought it up to you, I I saw the interest that you had in it, um, and I just thought it was a perfect topic for us. Definitely, because, you know, not only when you talk about gameplay with games, music is a, it's, it makes up a big part of a game. You can have a great game, but if the music is horrendous, it doesn't make it worth it. And there are just some themes that are so iconic that it sticks with you forever. Or in my case, I usually hear these at least once a day in my head while I'm at work. So uh, what Anthony and I did is um, we composed our top 10 video game music themes, whether it be themes for the, uh, for the whole game or certain sound effects. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, I know me being me, narrowing it down to 10 after playing video games for, oh, I don't know, you know, 35 years of my life uh, or 36 years of my life was a little bit hard. So I, I kind of went over a little bit. How did you do? I went over also. I had the ball rolling slowly a little bit uphill first, but then it just kept going back and forth, back and forth. And even as I'm, I, was, I was composing the list, uh, I was like, oh, crap, I don't have this one. How can I not have this one here? Where am I going to put this one here? Oh, and I, and I definitely need to put this one in here, otherwise he's never going to let me back on the show again. So ran, running out the top ten and then adding a, couple, adding a couple of honorable mentions, it was a little tough, but I'm happy with my list. For the most part, I'm happy with the order. The honorable mentions, um, they're not in any specific order for me except for the top one. Okay, cool. And then, uh, you know, uh, just to, to talk about the same thing, when I, was, when I was trying to figure out the ones to, the first thing that I did, at least in my approach, was I put, I, I put down the ones that literally came to the top of mind. Like, in other words, what are the first things I think about when I think of video game music? And I knew immediately that those had to go on my list because if they lit- if they pop right into my head, then I know they've made such an impact on my life. And to your point, I'll, you know, I'll hear them randomly at work. Hell, one of them is my ringtone on my phone. So I did the same thing. And then afterwards I was trying to figure out, I was like, okay, what, what am I missing that I know is also iconic? So I did a little bit of a deeper dive and I also wound up with, you know, about, I have my 10 core ones, my top 10, and then I have a, a few honorable mentions as well. Yeah, same thing with me. Um, my my top one is actually my work phone ringtone. And my personal phone, it's all set up for a bunch of different things. Uh, but my work phone, everything is set up for video game, with one exception, my, my, vo- vo- my voicemail phone. But everything else is video game. And when I leave the ringer on, I'm at work. It starts ringing. I get my co- some of my coworkers going, is that what I think it is? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it's always nice when uh, it's always nice when um, your ringtone goes off and you see somebody perk up and and recognize it, and then it's just like, yep, gamer connection right there. That's that and nerd connection, at least with my personal phone. Yeah, that may well that makes sense. <laughs> can be nerds, but yeah, you know, it's kind of interchangeable. No, not really. Okay, not interchangeable. No, no, no. Well, yes and no. It depends. It depends how you categorize it. Well, considering that both of us are nerds, so and you're more of a gamer than I am because I focus more on the old, older stuff. So yeah. yeah, it kind of. All right, cool. So I think um, I think the way we're gonna do this is um, you're gonna go through. Uh, let Let's get the honorable mentions out of the way for both of us, right? Let's just do that. So you hit up. You hit up. How many honorable mentions do you have? I have five. Okay, and I have five as well. So we might as well just called this the top 15 even though our honorable mentions are not in any order <laughs> but um why don't you hit up your honorable mentions um and you know 
we'll talk talk a little bit about each one brief you know briefly uh i'll briefly hit up mine as well before we really get into the the, the real top 10. sounds good so my five honorable mentions like i mentioned they're in no particular order but i'll go from five to one um number five the password selection from mega man 2. Ooh, that's a good one I remember when, um, when we were at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo a couple of years ago, that live band that was playing the Mega Man mm -hmm. 2 music, and went straight from that to one of the other selections on my list, and that's one of the ones where it's just, oh yeah, perfect, you know, when you hear this theme, you think of the game, and when you hear the game, you think it's one of the themes that you definitely think of, because, you well, it's something you have to deal with. But, you know, Mega Man 2 was probably the best one of the... Um, of the original Nintendo series, arguably, because, you know, the first one was a little rough around the engines, but Mega Man 2 uh, perfected it because, you know, first off, the eight, eight robots instead, and more importantly, having the password option. This way you can actually leave the game and left and go off, um, do whatever, because I still have yet to beat the original Mega Man. I beat but... two through five, but the first one, nope. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know what? And I can understand that because that first, let me tell you, that first one was, I mean, Mega Man's known for being really hard, but that first one is super hard. And it took me a re it took me a really long time to actually beat it. I wasn't a, you know, a full-fledged adult by the time I beat it. So it was at least 20 years after it came out. Yeah, I got the, um, I was gifted by my wife, the Mega Man collector's pack, uh, collector's edition nice. for the 3DS. So it's one through six on there. And that's how I've been going through it. All right, and that's a good way to do it. So you know, there there is potential for you to beat the first one. Um, but what is it about the password music? Really quickly, what is it about the password music that you find memorable? What does it's it remind you catchy. of? It's just catchy. That's all it is. I mean, it's just a relaxing. I mean, I find it relaxing. It's just catchy. It's just one of those things that gets stuck in your head. That's how it is for most of the things on my list. You know, mm -hmm. it's just they're just catchy things now i have a very eclectic music collection i mean my ipod goes from ella fitzgerald to red man oh wow and, and everything i mean so yeah music's a big thing all right so then uh, what else you got on your animals okay number four the airship music from super mario brothers three so don't 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 you know everyone everyone knows that one and it's just it's just iconic because you know how in most games when you get to a boss stage the music changes and this one it, it's so it was so different you know mario 3 is one of the top games of the nes system um, nes and just the soundtrack on it you know it's one of those iconic things and trust me that is spoilers that is not the only super mario 3 entry on my list mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you. I know how. I know your love for Mario, so I. I'm not surprised at all. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. All right, what else you got? All right, number three from the first Sonic the Hedgehog, the boss music with Doctor Robotnik, not Eggman. Oh it's, yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's, you know, because you know most of the Sonic music is fast throughout the levels, and it just goes to. Oh wow! This is different. This is catchy. You know you're fighting a boss, and it can go bad. So let's see what happens. I always found that the um, I always found that the the theme also was um, was just notable f to your point for the change of pace. But um, but again, it was just one of those things. It was like it had um, it had a little bit more bass to it, I guess. Um, and because it hit that lower, you know, kind of hit the lower registry, you you knew it was specific for a bad guy. Um, and it worked out really well. It did not make it into the movie, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm still trying to go through that episode of your of last week's episode because since I have been home, I haven't been commuting. Since I haven't been commuting, I haven't been listening to my podcasts. Oh, and, okay. And that is also not the last um, boss music you will find on my list. Awesome. All right, so uh, you got two more, right? Two more honorable? Okay, number two. And this one, I had to, I had to include this game because if I didn't, you'd probably never invite me again. Tetris. Yes, Tetris is very important. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna split the one this one both ways because the NES, the Nintendo one is is definitely more iconic, but the Game Boy one isn't bad either. But Tetris definitely, the, I think it's the Sugar Plum March of the Sugar Plum Fairy. I forget. I believe so. 
but um, yeah, but, yeah so, that one that one definitely needs to be on there because you know you know Tetris. I mean, how do you not remember that song? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Your last honorable mention. Last honorable mention, and this is a tough one also because, being that it is my second favorite franchise, it is the theme from the original Metroid. I'm talking about the Brinstar level. You know, when you first start off, um, it was a tough one for me, but it's my top honorable mention because because it, it, it could not break the top ten because I have another Metroid theme in my top ten. But it's just one of those. It's catchy. It's kind of feel good uh, before the game starts to get harder. When you go to the go to the other levels, like Ridley's Lair, Crates Lair, Norfair, and then Torian and everything. So Brinstar's like, ah, da, na, na, na. oh wait, that's right, no singing. Or, or, no, are, that, we, are we are we that rule? That's because a Larry. Gonna... Well, that's a Larry rule. I, I I never I never told anybody else they couldn't sing. True. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to sing all this time. Yeah. But those those are not my top five um, honorable mentions. All right, cool. So, Mario, Sonic, Tetris, and Metroid. So a little bit from everything. All right, and that you know what? And that's a good list. Um, uh, I'm noticing um, your, your list is going to be primarily NES, isn't it? With, um, with, NES, with a sprinkle of uh, Sonic. <laughs> and, and a couple of Game Boy. Ah, but mostly cool. NES. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think I, have two, I have two Game Boys in there. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so good list on your honorables. I'm going to run through mine um, really quickly. Uh, and I had a very, I had a, again, I had a, I didn't have as hard of a time figuring out the honorable mentions. I had a, I had a really hard time in my top 10 and putting them in the order I put them in. But for my honorable mentions, and again, in no specific order, um, the first one, I know Larry's going to love this um, because I know how much he loves Castlevania 2. And... Uh, <laughs> And I really wanted that. I really wanted this to make the top ten, but it just it just couldn't make it. But uh, Castlevania Two: The Silence of the Daylight is the name of the track, and that's basically the daytime track when you're going through the board, uh, going through the the game. Um, it's just one of those ones again. Um, I was I guess I was one of the few people, or in the minority of um, people who enjoyed Castlevania Two. So uh, and I played through it so much that that song is ingrained in my head. I think just based off the, you know, going back to your conscience, the two of you having, if Larry actually makes it through Simon's quest and decides to beat it, he automatically wins for the year. You know what's funny? I was going to I was gonna pose that to him, but I'm afraid he might actually do it. <laughs> well, I'm not going to know unless he tries it. But That's yeah, right. I think if he does that, then automatic win. Yeah, See well, Larry. You know, I'm sure he appreciates you uh, looking out for him. <laughs> But uh, so yeah, Castlevania Two: Silence of the Daylight. Um, my uh, my next honorable mention uh, is a Super Mario one, but it is for the Super Nintendo. It's the Overworld theme for Super Mario World. I don't know if you remember that one, but um, again, it was one of those things where it was just like it was There's really a couple up- of them. So yeah, um, it was really upbeat. Uh, it's liter- it's the one when you- the first level you go on it, and it's just. It's just got a really upbeat catchiness to it. It, it you know, it, it feels very Mario, um, and you just kind of, you just kind of enjoy it as you're working your way through the levels on, in that first world. But they use it a lot. And now it's stuck in my head. Now this is what's this is what's going to happen as we do this, and it's probably going to happen with the viewers and listeners as we mention these things. Um, you know, certain things are going to get stuck in people's heads, and now everyone's going to get hate mail for it. Damn you for leaving things stuck in my head on endless loop for hours at a time, and now I have to go home and play it. You know what? That's okay. That you know what? That's what this show is all about. This show is about getting everybody to you know remember remember the good times of retro, kind of go back and say, oh yeah, I haven't thought about that in a long time, or you know. So, you know, it's just like any other song on the radio that you hear that gets stuck in your head. It's like, you know what? Head over to YouTube and just give it a listen. You'll be fine. You know, that's the nice thing about um, when you when you got one, on one of your trips to Japan, when you got me the Super Mario Brothers CD list, um, CD collection, and Mary likes hearing it when we're traveling. So between that and the Queen and David Bowie, yeah. Nice. So you have Queen, David Bowie, and Super Mario. Yeah. Nice. That's a great. I approved the set list. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, my third one, and th- again, and you will be surprised about this because um, I really thought this was going to make my top ten, but 
I put the Tetris theme in my honorable mentions. It did not make it. Um, uh, I'm surprised because you are the puzzle man, and I thought yeah. Tetris would definitely be in the top ten. So, yeah, I think that's our first one that we have matching somewhere. Yep, that is definitely the first one, and, and it's both in our honorable mentions. I don't know. You know what happened when I did my top ten? It was in there. I go, and it just fell out because there were other ones where I'm like, no. I go, you know what? I go, this one just edges it out a little bit. So, um, and for different reasons. So Tetris theme, which we already talked about, made my list. The last two I'm just going to say together um, because they're both from the same game. And I'm talking about The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time from the Nintendo 64. Um, that game was rife with memorable music. And the two that I want to point out are two of the songs you actually play on the ocarina. One was Zelda's Lullaby, um, which was kind of, you know, very, uh, you know, very calming, very, melo- you know, and like melodic. And But then there was the Song of Time, which basically allowed you to go through time. You either became a kid or you became an adult, Link. Um, and the Song of Time is the one probably that uh, I remember or, or I remember playing the most out of all of the songs on that ocarina. And it was just... You know, it's just, I can always hear it in my head. And you are, you are the Zelda junkie. So there definitely have to be a couple of Zeldas in there on your list. Probably as many as Mario's as I, as I have Mario on my list. But that's why we, that's why we tell you folks to stay tuned. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? You're probably right. I probably have the same amount of Zelda to your Mario. uh, If not, maybe even more. We'll see. Um, So those are our honorable mentions. Um, I could throw I could throw a couple of honorable honorable ones, but just little things little things to throw out, just little things to throw out there that you may remember for people who are listening or watching. But Mortal Kombat, finish him. Everybody knows what that sounds like in their head. There's no question about it. Oh my god, definitely, yeah, yeah. Finish between, him is a big yeah. Between finish him, fatality, and scorpions, get over here. You know, like you can you can hear those in your head very easily. Uh, can I just add one, add one to that Mortal Kombat? What about Toasty? Oh, well, oh yeah, you can't forget Toasty. Can't forget, <laughs> can't forget the Toasty. Yeah, Mortal Kombat too. Yep. And then uh, one really quickly that's from um, maybe uh, the, I mean I would think you everybody would remember this one. Maybe some people don't, but I remember it from the arcade more than I do from the Genesis, even though I had the game. But Altered Beast, when you first start the game and the guy says, "Rise from your grave." Do you remember that? Like, rise from your grave. It was really, lo- like, so really low register. It's been so long since I played it. I'm going to have to go. Now I'm going to have to go look it up. See, that, have- that's, and that's what it says. That's the point. That's the point of this. But I just wanted to throw those two out there because it was, the, those were two other ones that popped in my head. And I'm like, yeah, I go, they're not, they're not like, they don't make my list. I was like, but I thought they were cool enough to at least bring up. All right. Now that that's done, we're going to head into the top 10. Charlie, the floor is yours. Uh, you know, when you as you hit each one, you know, we'll, we'll go back and forth a little bit, but talk about why, you know, why you chose it and what, you know, like maybe is there a memory attached to it or something like that? But I, I definitely want to hear like, you know, your reasoning behind these things. Okay, so my top ten, we'll start with number ten. Um, Super Mario Brothers 2, um, the wart fight music. For whatever reason, I think that's the best music. That's the best music in the game. And being Mario heavy, I had to get one from each of the NES games. But um, it's just one of those. It just kind of sticks in your head. You know, it's going to be a tough battle because of the way it goes. And also, the music from Mario 2 or Super Mario USA, like um, or Doki Doki Panic, if you really want to go there. Um, the music for Mario 2 is so different from the other ones because the gameplay is so different. So it, it is one thing that sticks out because he is one of the tougher bosses to beat in that in the Mario um, NES collection. Because him and Claw Grip from World Five and Super Mario 2 were tough, but um, the Wart fight music is my favorite part, is my favorite music from that game. Nice and um, yeah, and you know to your point, uh, Mario Two is so uh, it, it's so outside the norm. And again, because you know, Nintendo decided that uh, you know people in the U.S. weren't going to be able to beat the original Mario Two, so they gave us Mario USA. Um, uh, it, it, it's just a, it's such a strange uh, rationale behind that. But still, we we did get a repurposed game, but it, it still managed to be cool. 
Yeah, it was it was cool because it was different. And, you know, one of the gripes I have about the Famicom, the mini Famicom, which once again, thank you again for grabbing for me from Japan, is the fact that they had yeah, while they have Super Mario USA on it, they don't have the original Super Mario 2 on it, which is kind of disappointing. But what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. Oh wait, I'll just play it on I'll just play it from the virtual console on my 3DS with the original 8-bit graphics, which makes it so much better. Well, there you go. See, you can all, you can always get your hands on it some way. Yeah. So, uh, number nine from Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, I, the first time you hear this theme is in level one and two. Um, mm-hmm. And it's the, oh, it's the one with basically with the piano. It's so upbeat, it's so fast, and it's just kind of, whoa, that's different, that's funny, I like it. And Mario 3 is the most iconic one. Um, some people say of the franchise, definitely of the original NES. Uh, mm-hmm. Me personally, as I've said ad nauseum on the show and plus in the posts, mine is still the original Super Mario Bros. 2, but Mario 3 is right behind it. But, you know, so many different levels in Mario 3 between... Um, the map state, the map stages, um, the map scenes. We have to have a soundtrack, and all the different levels have their own different soundtracks. And you know, sometimes you could tell how the level's going to be based on the music, but that one really sticks out to me for Super Mario Three. Very cool. And I think uh, to your point, like Super Mario Three, I think um, for a lot of people, it's like the it, it. You know, a lot of lists. If you look them up online, it's it's pretty much like considered the best game on the NES. Yeah, it's definitely up. It's definitely up in the top five, not even the top ten. I mean, it is in the top five. It was such an iconic game. It was such a change from the original, you know, because you went from original to okay, Doki Doki Panic Mario Two, whatever you want to, whatever mosh you want to call that. And basically, it went back to base, um, back to the basics from the original Super Mario Brothers and expanded on it. Having Bowser was eight children, no, seven children, excuse me. And the mini fortresses and having different items that just opened up the franchise for the rest of the run, you know, Mario mm-hmm. World and everything else um, for each system. Yeah, each I mean, like, yeah. Plus, who knew that Bowser was, uh, you know, who knew Bowser had seven kids? I mean, that's just, just weird. Yeah, I wonder what Mrs. Bowser looks like. Yeah, I know. We, we, we've never met her. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe maybe that's a concept someone has to work on out there. Yeah, well, you know, uh, right. You know what? Write write a letter to Nintendo and mail it to them. Yeah, I mean, you know, it might work. I mean, it works for that um that ninety year old in Japan who had their original Game Boy replaced after it died, which mine still works from nineteen ninety two. So I can't complain either. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that was that was a great story, by the way. Yeah, she was ninety five, actually, I believe. Yeah, I mean, she was in her nineties that much, I know, but that's that was just awesome that they were able to. Able to just hey or have a here have a spare one thunk that does make you wonder how many they have still left hanging out somewhere in Japan or in a warehouse in the North mm. Pacific Northwest. Oh, I'm sure there are tons. Oh yeah, as long as it's not buried in the desert like ET. Mm. No, they, yeah, well e- ET belongs in the desert. Yeah, like yeah, I remember the, at the when we when we came down for the retro expo, Mary looked at it for thirty seconds and goes, "Daddy, what is this? It's horrible." <laughs> bad when a six-year-old tells you that <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> uh, number eight uh we're going to switch consoles to sega sonic from sonic the hedgehog 2 the sky chase zone music oh, uh, that's the one yeah. if you don't remember or not, who you're playing i'm sorry sonic or tails depending on who you're playing is flying the airplane the biplane yes. and that's just once again, it, it, it's a different theme. It's you know, it goes from all the high strung stuff from the early the levels to, oh, this is calm and soothing, and you just kind of get into it, and you don't want the level to end because the music is so good. That's how you know you have a good um, video game theme when you don't want that level to end because you just want to hear the music playing over and over. Yeah, and I remember playing through that level too. And um, again, Sonic, Sonic was always—I uh, mean, you know, granted, you know, the gameplay in it is is fantastic. But every every uh, every game they released always had something memorable on the music side, and and uh, that's an interesting one to pull out because it stands out for how different it is from the rest. Yeah, and it definitely was. It does stand out. It's so because you know the the game is high strung for lack of a better term. Then mm-hmm. you get to this level. Ooh, this is calm and coming. And then the next two levels are the last two levels, and it's, it just goes from, it goes to 
really high strung to okay, this is the end, it's me or him, and that's it. Although nice. I don't remember if the last level in Sonic 2 is the regular boss music, I don't remember. Either uh, way. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Alright, so number seven. Um, and this is my first Game Boy um mention. Nice. Because we're talking about the Game Boy version, not the brand new Switch version. So you already know where I'm going with this. Yes, the I Legend do. Link's Awakening, the overworld theme. Now, this just barely beat out the Legend of Zelda's original theme for a couple of reasons. It sticks to the original theme for the most part, but mm -hmm. the way it starts and the way it ends before it starts to recycle again, it's just different. It's a little more upbeat and... It just kind of sticks with me a little bit better, and it's amazing because as I talk about these things, the themes are just playing in my head, as I'm sure some of them are for you also. But Link's Awakening is actually, you know, the game that was um, the only Game Boy game featuring um, in the Legend of Zelda franchise, and it's one of the best ones of the franchise, and it's the only one I've ever beaten without a guide. Oh, wow. And this was back in the night. Yeah, because, you know, Zelda, you know, like the RPG slash adventure, whatever you want to call it, it's not my forte. I'm more like the shoot 'em up or even like the Mario, Metroid, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, Legend of Zelda has that little bit of RPG in it, which isn't, really isn't my thing. But, you know, it was a good game. Um, and the music throughout the whole um, the, throughout the whole game is just phenomenal. So now let me ask you this. I know you've never you've never played Link's Awakening because it's a handheld, correct? That is correct. I've, um Okay, so have you a have you at least listened to the music, which I'm, I'm sure is a yes, as we we're getting ready for this episode, and b how different is it front to it to what's on the Switch version? Um, I did I did listen to it, but I'll be honest with you, I I'm not in a place where I can compare the two because I haven't played the Switch one since September, I think, and I really need to go back and finish it because okay. I was enjoying it. But um, I honestly can't give you an answer to that question because I didn't, I wasn't expecting that. Um, but I will say this: I mean, I thought the music when I listened to the Game Boy version that you know um, on your list, um, I thought that I thought it was uh, I thought it was really cool. I mean, it was a nice little twist on the Zelda theme. So yeah, and it was, like I said, the twist. It, uh, well, I guess you could say twist, or it's just a different version of it, but it's a more upbeat version. You could tell that. Um, you can also tell from the original Legend of Zelda music to that version, yeah, it's still 8-bit, but you can tell that there was still improvement in the music as the years went by. Mm, yes, that is, that is definitely true. <laughs> so, number six, sticking with the Game Boy, from Super Mario Land, the theme music from Four Worlds 4-1 and 4-2, um, which is more of a Far East, Oriental, Eastern, um, Western Pacific, um, whatever you want to call it, but you could tell um, it's just one of those ones that gets stuck in your head and it's kind of catchy and it's kind of upbeat and it's just it's just a good one that you, that you keep because the levels are good but also because you know when you look at Super Mario Land on the game yes it's kind of, it is a copy of it's kind of like the original Super Mario Brothers but as with the all Game Boy games versus their NES counterparts, it's a totally different plot line, totally different thing. You know, you don't have Bowser and Toadstool and everyone else. And when you have Daisy and you have all the other uh, bosses which have um, Japanese names to it, but the music for level 4-1 and 4-2, it's catchy, it's fast, and it just goes, it, it runs well with the level. And that's, you know, that's another way how you know that the, that the music is good, because if the music's in sync with the level, then you got a level, you got good music, and you have a good game. Yeah. Um, and I think um, this one I have to take your word for because I've never played a, any of the Super Mario Lands. Uh, all, I have listened to, now I've listened to this um, this uh, piece of music, and I thought it was really cool and really fun. And, it, you know, um, you can tell when a Mario, you can tell when it's a Mario theme of some kind. You know what I mean? Like Mario Mario games have a specific sound to them. And the minute I heard this from like the first few notes, I'm like, "Oh yeah, I go, of course this fits in a Mario game." If I had to guess it on the blind, I would have said it's a Mario game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they all have their all catches and you can sometimes tell, you know, the newer ones were influenced by the older ones. Yeah. All right. So, number so that's now that we're halfway through the list, number 5, we're going to go back to the Nintendo Mm -hmm. Back to Mega Man 2, Crash Man, 
or Clash Man, whichever you prefer. But either way, it's Crash Man, and the, the you know, it's a really cool <laughs> and. Back to, going back to the Retro Gaming Expo when we were when I was there in 2018, that live band when I was playing the Mega Man 2 music. This is what they played, and it's just it just sticks with you. I mean, you know, like I said before, Mega Man 2 is the best one on the of the franchise on the NES, and the music there are so there are so much good music on that game itself. Where do you narrow it down to? And I had to, I picked two of them out of there. So, mm -hmm. but the Crash Man level music is just. It just it just it just catches with you. It sticks with you, and it goes. In, it's another one that goes in sync with the level. Now, with um, with Crash Man, um, do you remember? Do you remember in Mega Man Two the order in which you are supposed to defeat the characters? Because you know, when you defeat one, their power can help you beat one of the other ones a lot easier. Do you remember if Crash Man was first or whatever? I don't remember. I think he's towards the end. I think he's in the bottom four. Oh, okay. Uh, it's been a while since I played Mega Man 2, but I think he's in the bottom four. Because I, I tried the Rockman version on the Famicom also. It's been a few months since I played that. But, um, I, yeah, I don't have the I, I have the cheat list on my phone, but I don't remember. Okay. Uh, number four. Now, this one, I think this one surprised you when I mentioned it, because it's normally not in my genre of games. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, the fight music. Oh Enough yeah, said. no, you don't need to there say is, anything else. No, you cannot possibly see anything, say anything more about because, just like with the Rocky movies, you know, where the music goes is in sync with the fight. That music is just—it's inspirational. It makes you want to kick your opponent's ass, mm -hmm. and it just keeps you going, going, and going. And it is such a great game on its own without the music. But then when you add, add that soundtrack and the the fight music. It just blows it out of the water, you know. Mike Tyson's Punch Out's in my, my top ten of any top ten NES favorites of all time, and the soundtrack is definitely one of the reasons of why. All right, yeah, and you know, um, Mike Tyson's Punch Out was one of the games that I remember playing ad nauseum. Like, I, I don't know, I, I can't tell you how many times I played through and beat that game because it was just, it was just so damn fun. Um, and again, part of the reason why is that music. That music really makes you wanna hell. It made me wanna get up and you know beat somebody up in person. In real life, so uh, I never did that though. I have a confession to make. I've never beaten it all the way through. Really? Wow. Okay. How far have you gotten? Uh, second piston Honda. Oh wow. Okay. He's hard. He is hard. Yeah, I just haven't had the time. You know, I just haven't had the patience. You know, you know, it's time to quit when you want to throw the controller and. You know, I have my Nintendo set up with my Super Nintendo set up with my floor model cathode ray tube television in the next room. And I don't want to throw things and I don't want to break things because that TV is older than me and it still works. Yes. Because uh, I will be turning 40 in August. So, yeah, tells you how how good the TV is. Yeah, that's all. You know, it, it's nice when you have things that, you know, are, you know, have longevity. Uh, yeah. Break down in five seconds, like, you know, Xbox 360. Um that's a whole other story. Yeah. Hey, one thing about retro games, you don't have to worry about them getting upgraded and getting viruses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you pay for it, you get the entire game. Exactly. All right, so top three. Now, number three, back to Metroid. Now, mm. like I said, this, this isn't so much a theme as it is a sound effect, but when you pick up an item in the original Metroid, that... <laughs> It's kind of inspirational. I think that's the best way to describe it. And it just barely, you know, my honorable mention to top 10, like the Metroid item versus the theme, it was a it was a back and forth. And I just went with the theme with the item because no matter where you are in the game, you know, even when you get that last energy tank after beating Kraid, that's still the music you're going to hear. And it's like I said, it's so calming. It's so inspirational because, you know, if you've never played Metroid, the original Metroid before, it can be a tough game, especially if you don't know where you're going and what you have to get because it's because of the open world concept. Yeah. And that was um, that was one of the reasons why Metroid was one of those games. It took me a long time to beat because I always lost my way in it. So um, so I would always struggle with it. And there were many times where I just kind of put it down and said, you know what, I'm fine. 
I, I can't figure it out. Goodbye. Um, but, and eventually I went back and I beat it. But I will say, I agree with you. It's like when you get that item, that music is not only like, it's got like a sense of, you know, again, it's like got a little, you know, ethereal, you know, spacey kind of sound to it. But it's all, it's also so calming and it gives you that sense of accomplishment. Like, wow, I, you know, I did something. <laughs> Exactly. That's what I was going to mention. It gives you a sense of accomplishment. And that's how it should be because it is a tough game. And you want to, you know, just like the motivation when you're playing Mike Tyson's punch out, you want to keep going, you know, you, and, you know, if the music helps you keep going, well, let it be. So top two, number two, back to Legend of Zelda, the level nine theme. Ooh, all right. That, that just popped in my head the minute you said it. Because, you know, it's it, it, the it's different than the other dungeons, and the way the music is playing, you just know, oh crap, this is going to be very hard. And it is the hardest level in the game because there's other, because not to mention how big it is, how much of a maze it is, the enemies that are in there. There's all the there's also the two other enemies that you've never met before, especially the Patra, which is one of the hardest ones to be in the game. And plus, you have to get the red ring, and you have to find that silver arrow arrow before you can get to Ganon and the the level is massive just the, the music goes with it because it's such a oh crap it's, it's about to get real we need to you know it's like kill or be killed let's get this done and it's so iconic and I, I I figure you as a Zelda man would definitely agree with me would be okay with me putting that atop the overworld theme from the original Zelda yeah, I remember when I first got to level nine in that game, uh, the minute I walked through, you know, the minute I walked into the dungeon and I heard that music, I knew like, OK, this is like like movie climax music. You know what I mean? You know, you're heading in for that final showdown because it's so different. Um, and, and it had that it has that ominous feel to it, too, as you're listening to it. So, you know, you know, it's all going down. You just know it. Yeah, ominous. Ominous is the, probably the best word to use for it. See, I've been home too long. I can't, you know, I can't put hmm. thoughts into you know, brain mouth connection bad. I need to get back to work eventually. <laughs> but yeah, it is definitely, you know, from an iconic game, it is probably, in my in my opinion, the best um, soundtrack of that game because it is ominous. It's oh crap, this is going to get this is going this is going to hurt. That's basically what the music is telling you, mm -hmm. and. I can I can only say once I've ever beaten level nine without having to use the potion. Only oh once. wow! Um, I yeah. I I can't say that I've gone through it without a potion. I think I've used a potion every time. Yeah. And finally, drum roll, please. Uh, I I have a feeling I know what this is. Yeah, you probably do because it's the original. It's the classic. It's what the whole franchise, if not the whole company, is built on. Mm -hmm. The theme from the original Super Mario Brothers, which is also my ringtone for my work phone. Yeah, I assume you. I, I assume Where? it's the Overworld theme, right? You know, level one one. You know. Correct. Da, 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 da. Like, where do you even begin? It is so iconic. Um, just from the start, you know, it's just, it's catchy. It's not. Um, it's not ominous. It kind of has a good feel to it. It's like, okay, we're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. But it's just something that's it's stuck. It's held up mm -hmm. 35 years later. You know, that's how you know you have a good game and you have a good franchise when the original from 1985 still holds up today. I mean, where do you even start? You can't. There's no, you know, it's no. just there. It's what Nintendo is. And yeah, it's what it Mario is. Whenever, whenever you think of Mario, one of the first things you think of is that theme. And uh, you know, you can th first off, you can thank Koji Kondo for that. Koji Kondo is responsible for so many of the uh, of the most memorable Nintendo themes. Obviously, uh, Zelda and Mario, he both worked on. Um, but to your point, uh, the other thing about that Mario theme is that it's so universal. Like, if you played that randomly, I guarantee you, a majority of people will know exactly what it is, even if they've either never played a Mario or saw it in passing or something like that, they'll still recognize it because it's just, it's just part of, it's practically part of our universal language. Exactly. You know, perfect example. Like I said, on my work phone, it is my ringtone for when my work phone rings. And if I have the volume up, no matter where I am, whether it be at a terminal, down, actually riding the trains or whatnot, that my phone, my hip starts playing the, playing the song and people just look at me like, Mario? 
Yeah. I nice. see I see you're a nerd also. But it is, it is uh, it's just iconic. That's the only that's the best way to describe it. It's iconic. Yeah. And that rounds up my top ten. And then you know what that we have. Say that again? Now the question is how many matches do we have? Uh, surprisingly, not that many. Um, uh, you're gonna find out. But um, my um, my top ten are a bit uh, a bit interesting, a bit more maybe a bit more diverse than yours. And uh, we're gonna jump right into it with my number ten. It ju- it edged out Tetris. Tetris fell into my honorable mentions because of this. And it was one of the first games I ever played on the Sony PlayStation that really showed me that like we were really getting into like the next generation of gaming. You know, uh, PlayStation kind of introduced the real aspect of like 3D gaming. Granted, when you look back at it now, all the polygons and everything like that, they don't exactly look great. I was like, but for that, for the time, it was absolutely amazing. And the game that I'm I want to talk about here. Uh, specifically for its opening theme and a theme that was used in some of the levels is Tomb Raider. Um, And it was the game that brought Lara Croft into all of our lives, which was really awesome. But the music itself, when you first hear it, it's very, um, it's very serene. It's very tranquil. It's very soothing. So, um, and it's kind of interesting because, you know, when you go into a game, when you go into a video game, uh, or an act, or what you expect to be an action game. You think it's going to be like, you know, really loud, pounding music and stuff like that. And this one was not. It was the complete opposite. It was kind of quiet and calm. Um, before, of course, you started shooting bears and tigers and stuff. I have absolutely nothing to add because I've never played the Tomb Raider game. You, you may now take my retro gamer card away. No. I did not go past Super Nintendo, with the exception of the Game Boy Advance and the 3DS. Uh, well, I, I would have recommended the PlayStation Mini for you or the PlayStation Classic for you to at least get a little knowledge of it. And, and to be honest with you, for probably the prices it goes for now, it may even be worth getting just to kind of try out some PlayStation games, although it doesn't have the strongest list on there. Um, but um, I do think uh, you, de- you definitely did miss out with the PlayStation um, it, it was a special system, and Tomb Raider also kind of redefined um, what it is to game in terms of like you know by introducing you know want to be in one of the first games to really give you a full sense of 3D gaming. Yeah, I mean I've played PlayStation games before, but too many buttons on the controllers for my feeble mind. That <laughs> that's where I had my issue with like PlayStation and N64 and GameCube and oh so on and so on. Just too many buttons. So you basically had a six button limit. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair. But um, you know, but again, the the Tomb Raider theme is definitely one that I all I will always remember in my head because uh, again, it's just like it's also one of those ones where I think of it's like if I'm having a bad day, it's like if that pops in my head, it just kind of calms me down a little bit, which is nice. Um, and that's you know with the good theme because you know it is it is things like that you know memorable things like memorable things like that you know having a bad day or whatever or you're in a bad mood or whatnot you think of this oh. Everything's okay now. I'm happy. I'm gonna go play it now. Exactly. Um, and speaking of uh, and speaking of uh, songs or themes that calm me down, uh, number nine actually is another one like that. It's got a very sweet and soothing sound. It again is from the Legend of Zelda series, but this time it's from the arguably best Legend of Zelda ever made. Again, I say arguably because I go back and forth sometimes. Uh, I'm talking about the main theme for Ocarina of Time, and I'm talking about on the title screen. I'm not talking about the overworld where you're running around um, because that one's more upbeat. And, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I really enjoy the upbeat nature of that one. But this one, when you first hear it, and it's the legend of it's the first time I've ever heard the Legend of Zelda theme like really slowed down and cool and calm and soothing and it was just really like there was just something special about it right from the get-go cool calm and soothing i may have to try that one now yeah well the game the game is not anywhere near that because it's a very uh the depth in this game is just amazing like it is truly an adventure um and like i said one uh arguably one of the best zelda games if not the best zelda game ever made so um, you can make a good argument for that, but um, yeah, but that, but Ocarina of Time main theme definitely one that sticks in my head. Uh, and speaking of title themes, I'm going for three in a row here uh, with my number eight. We're switching over to the Sega Genesis. I'm trying to give. Uh, I wound up giving a little love to you know a few different systems, which is nice. 
Um, but uh, on the Sega Genesis, nothing sticks out in my head more when I think of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, well, except for one other thing. But the title theme of the original Sonic the Hedgehog. It's, it's all of like 10 seconds. But it's the coolest 10 seconds I think I've ever heard composed in terms, you know, to, to sell you on a game. Well, considering um, Sonic is basically Sega's Mario, it's definitely understandable. It's, you know, it's Sega's version of the of the original Super Mario. Well, not quite the Super Mario Brothers theme, but actually, yeah, you can. You could say it's like Sega's version of the Super Mario Brothers theme, just on a, obviously, only a 10-second scale. But it is one of those things where as soon as you hear the first couple of bars, you know exactly what it is. Exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you say, you know, um, Sonic is uh, Sega's mascot. Somewhere somewhere in the video game universe, Alex Kidd is just, you know, in a corner somewhere crying his eyes out. <laughs> I have played Alex Kidd in Miracle World a couple of times on the Sega uh, And I was just like, yeah, Nintendo's better. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, until Sonic came along, Sonic kind of sped into our lives and just completely reinvented or created basically the console wars, which was, uh, which was really awesome at the time. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, moving on to number seven. Now this is one, this is one I really, um, I don't expect a lot of people to know this one because this, uh, this game was not very uh, widely sold. Uh, it hit and it came around to me at a time where um, my younger sister was also gaming and her and her friends used to come over to the house all the time and hang out and we would always pop this game on because it was a very easy game to pick up uh and on top of it it had really great tunes in it because it was um it was a dance game uh but it wasn't a dance game like a dance dance revolution it was one where it's like you had to press the directional buttons on the screen and then press a button to the beat of the music in order to do a dance move with your character. And the game I'm talking about on the Sony PlayStation is Bust a Groove. And the song that I picked from there was the title song for it, Bust a Groove, which was also um, on one of the, every, uh, every character in the game had their own song. And this one went to a character who was cosplaying as a cat and her name was Kitty N. So you're gonna grow up with the whole crazy cat lady. Well, you know, I do have two right now, so it's very easy for me to do that right now. I'll just go get ten more or something like that. But um, but the song Buster Group, like again, it was like it, it was just like that perfect storm in time. Um, my 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 younger sister and I and her friends, like we played this game like crazy, um, and it was just awesome because like every character had a different set of dance moves, so you were basically having a dance off in each level, and and every level, you know, there was a different background. Um, and you know all the animation going on with that. It was just an overall fun game, and the Buster Groove song, very catchy. Uh, again, if you were like if you were like in a club or something like that, and this song came on, um, you would you just would dance to it. I mean, it was, it's just that it just has that kind of you know that that cool uh, dance factor to it. I would not dance because I do not dance unless I am very very hammered or unless it is a slow dance. So, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll just I'll just nod and smile and take your word for it. That's perfectly fine. I just need to, you know, I just know that what I'll do is uh, next time we hang out, I'll get you drunk and then I'll pop the song on and we'll see what happens. Oh, well, I am Irish, so it's it, I'm, I'm not a cheap date when it comes to my whiskey. All right. Well, noted. It, some things may be worth the money, though, especially if I live stream it to the Retro Gamers podcast page. Um, if you do that, you might meet the business end of a Dalek. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't really feel like being exterminated. Uh, so that's my number seven, Bust a Groove. Um, if you've never heard it, um, I, you know, I urge you to to check it out on YouTube or something like that. Just look it up. Number six, um, I'd be remiss if I did not include this game on my list because it's by far my favorite, most favorite RPG of all time. I don't consider Legend of Zelda games RPG. I, I consider them more action adventure. So I want to point that out right now. Um, but, um, my favorite RPG of all time, Final Fantasy VII, and I'm talking about the Prelude, which again, plays right at the get-go when you first get that start screen up. And it's just, again, there's just something to it. It immediately evokes a Final Fantasy game. If you've ever played one, it's got that fantasy feel to it. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's no other way to really describe how, um, how it just impacts me every time I hear it. It's like 
I remember so much about that game and how epic it was. And it was probably the first game I've ever put 50 or 60 hours into. I'm just going to nod and smile again because I have absolutely nothing for this now RP, like i said rpgs aren't my thing i mean i tried playing the original final fantasy on the nes way 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 back when it it's just not my thing just like how first person shooters aren't your thing that's all apples oranges whatever yeah no and i get it and, and you know what i mean I, I give you credit for at least trying an rpg to see how it works but it's it's one of those genres where it's like you you either love it or you don't and that's just it as dumb as this sounds you know when i sit down to play a video game I don't want to have to think too hard. And it seems like with RPGs, I have to think a little too much. You know, as dumb as this and as much as this made me, might make me sound like an idiot, that's just how I am. You know, I want to relax when I play video games, you know, minimal thinking. Yeah. No, I mean, look, everybody's got preferences and it's, um, you know, it's just a genre that doesn't work for you. To your point, first person shooters never, ever worked for me. Granted, they gave me bad headaches. But uh, but aside from that, I just I always want to see my character on the screen. I don't just want to see the screen moving, you know. At least we can all agree on one thing. Yes, we ha- hashtag BB. Well, the vir- I mean, the, uh, the virtual boy is just in a class of itself. I don't even know how to describe that thing. But um, yeah, yeah, there's but, no way. No, but uh, yeah. So like, uh, yeah, Larry, La- La- I'm sure Larry's uh, ears are burning right now. Um, they're ringing. They're burning. Maybe they're falling off at this point. I don't know. But no, uh, it's only like we've mentioned it. So it's really not that bad. That's true. Uh, that's true. Maybe, maybe, you know what? Maybe a virtual boy theme will show up on my top five. Yeah. Okay. All right, jumping into my top five. Um, number five again. Um, we're going back to the we're going back to the original NES because you know, let's face it, um, that was the that was the, the most memorable system of my childhood because after the Atari, because Atari the games didn't really have music to them. The Nintendo was the first system that I had that actually you had music associated with each game, so. It makes sense that a lot of them would be stuck stuck in my head, at least. Uh, but for number five, got to go with the courtyard theme in Castlevania, which is basically the first level. The music in that first level, I mean, the minute, I mean, as soon as I think about it, it plays through, plays through my head. And it gets you going. It's a good way to start the game, you know. It's just, excuse me, you hit the ground running and the music does that also. It gets you, it gets you going, it gets you to start moving. Yeah, and uh, and if that doesn't get you, if that doesn't get you to start moving, the zombies that pop up, that pop off from off screen, they'll get you moving a little bit too. But um, yeah, that just that courtyard theme, just walking through in the beginning. I mean, you really get the sense of you're in for a great, you're in for like a really solid adventure, um, and it pumps you up, which is really cool. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, moving on to uh, number four, we are going back to the Sega Genesis, and we are returning to Sonic the Hedgehog. This was one I kind of, I kind of went back and forth on for a little bit because there are so many Sonic levels that have great themes, and I wanted, and I just wanted to pick one that stood out to me the most. And there was no question about it. I put the Sonic title theme at number eight. Number four is right after you press that start button and you start the Green Hill Zone. That theme is outstanding. Just outstanding. I can, I always hear it. I always hear that in my head. And now I have it stuck in my head too. But you are right, it is outstanding because it kind of sets the pace for the game. It's upbeat. It's not that fast, but it's fast enough to go in sync with the way Sonic moves. Mm-hmm. So it actually, it, it, like I said, it's, you know, like I've alluded to before, it's one of those themes where it syncs with the level and the game. Yeah. And, you know, and to your point, like, it's fast, but not too fast. I also think it's, it's, it's the one I remember the most because it's the, it's the, um, it's the first level of the game. So I'm learning how Sonic works and maneuvers. You know what I mean? So you're kind of practicing how he works and while you're practicing how he works and gets through a level you're hearing this song so i feel like i've spent more time hearing this song than any other song in the game um at least that's that that, at least that's how i equate it but still um just an absolutely fantastic song um and worthy of my number four spot now my top three are going to be very predictable 
uh, as I'm sure you'll know. You'll, you'll know as soon as uh, as soon as you hear them. So number three has to go to it has to go to. I haven't mentioned this yet on the NES Legend of Zelda, and I specifically am pointing out the title theme to the game. So before you press that start button, just the original title theme. Oh yeah, definitely. It's 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 like it is iconic. As soon as you hear the first couple of bars, you know exactly what it is and Zelda you know the original Legend of Zelda timeline aside it set the foundation for the Zelda franchise I mean it, the original game itself is also one of those top one in my top five but it is it is an iconic theme as soon as you hear it you know exactly what it is and then you know then you know after you start everything going into the overworld theme I knew Zelda was going to be in your top three I just didn't know which one would be where yeah, so uh, and and it, and it was hard for me to figure that out too. But the, the, just that title theme again, it's like the minute I hear it, I automatically see the title screen of the game. Like, and I see the animation. You know how like it changes color a little bit, and then um, if you don't start the game, it scrolls up, and you get the story and the items and everything, and it lists everything out. And it's just, but just listening to that theme, like I can listen to that theme any day of the week, no questions asked. You and me both, and. It- it's just playing the whole thing is just playing in my head right now but you know it's like you said it it, it is it is iconic you know you know what more can you possibly say uh can't say much more for that one uh and we can't say much more about this one because my number two it what just so happens to be what your number one was which is the super mario brothers over you know super mario brothers theme in the overworld um it really i mean I, I could have I could have skipped over it, but I wouldn't have been doing it justice because, again, one of the, if not the most memorable video game themes of all time. I mean, it has a glo- it literally has a global imprint. It really did. It made one. Now, and even when they did the when they did the Super Mario All Stars for the Super Nintendo, even that, you know, the couple of tweaks they did to it, it's still a really good catchy theme. Um, you know, it takes away a little bit of the eight bit fuzziness, but it sticks with the original. Mm-hmm. And they did a good job not only cleaning it up but tweaking it a little bit. But you know, I still got to go with the original because it is the original. Yeah, exactly. I mean, every look, everything had to start somewhere, and any Mario theme that follows it. Or is an homage to it, or a, a remastered or rearranged version? All goes back to that original one. So that one had to be up on my list, and it hit number two. Uh, number one, my top theme that plays in my head is the ringtone on my phone. Um, it is from the NES as well. It's from the Legend of Zelda as well, and it's of course the Overworld theme. Yeah. I will never get tired of listening to that theme. It is the best theme, hands down. I don't think it'll ever get beaten uh, in my book. No question. It's, it, it is definitely one of those themes that I can also listen to over and over and over again. And, no, I don't, have, I don't have that one on my phone. I thought I should change it for somebody. But yeah, it is definitely... As soon as you hear it, you know exactly what it is. And there, you know, there are certain var- and the, the variations of it have carried on. You know, Link's Awakening, like I mentioned, a link to the past, which I'm finally playing through. You know, you could still, you, you know, for the most part, those themes stick to it depending on where you are, at least with Link's Link to the Past. But in Link's Awakening, you know, it still sticks to it. But, you know, to me, the, the reason why I chose the Link's Awakening Link's Awakening one over the original was, A, I knew the original was going to be on your list. And, B, to me, it's just a little more catchier for me. But yeah. it's also, like, nostalgic. Like I said, Link's Awakening is a little more sentimental to me because it's the first one that I ever really beat truly on my own. Yeah. And, um, you know, and the other thing about the, the overall theme, though, for Legend of Zelda is that when I hear it, I immediately, I, like you can catch me sometimes, I just start to smile when I hear it. And and again, and that's just, and that's, that's the key to all of these. It's like, they've made some type of impact on you that, that you know, they make you, if they make you reminisce about when you were a kid playing the game, or just maybe you start thinking about, you know, traveling through, like with Zelda, I immediately think about traveling through the overworld, shooting Octoroks and P-Hats and all of those things. Um, and I, yeah, and I also think about like, like, how I felt when I accomplished that game, like when I defeated that game. There was like it was it was one of the first games I ever beat on the Nintendo, 
you know, Mario and Zelda were probably the first two games, or maybe, you know, somewhere in the first five. But, and that's why it's like, there's so much history um, between me and that game. It's just like, you know, I, I'm so connected to it. Yeah. I mean, there's really, there really is nothing, you know, what more can you possibly say? It is iconic. It is, you know, it is legendary. Legend. Uh, yeah, bet. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But it's just like you said, it, it is one of those feel good things where, you know, like I have a couple of ones also when I, when I hear the theme or I start playing it in my head, everything's okay in the world and it brings a smile to my face. So I could definitely understand how it is for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, you know what? I mean, that rounds out my top 10. Um, like I said, they were definitely, I think I beat you out though, in terms of Mario versus Zelda with, my, if I count my honorable mentions, I have five Zelda, uh, five Zelda things mentioned in there. And I believe you only had four Mario. Well, five, if you can count the honorable mentions, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Five. If you count them up. Okay. You count the honorable so yep. clearly, so clearly we can see which games had the most impact on us. Mario for you, Legend of Zelda for me. Uh, but I think uh, I think overall, um, really solid list on your end. Uh, I I enjoyed you know listening to not only which ones you picked but why, because um, that's always the important part of it. No, definitely your, your uh, on your end also. Even the stuff I didn't know because you know maybe one you know one of these days I will eventually try try the other stuff to see what it's like. But you know, like we said before, music does make a big part of the game you can make or break a game because if you have a eh, gameplay but good music you know you'll the music will power you through it but if you have great gameplay and the music sucks it's like yeah yeah okay you know like we alluded to with mike tyson's punch out that's a perfect soundtrack in the theme in that it gets you going it keeps you moving it inspires mm -hmm. you well inspiration more so for like the metroid item pickup you know oh wow i got this Okay, we can keep going, and it's the same thing with 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 Mike Tyson's Punch Out. But that's how you know when you have a when you have good music. Plus, when it gets stuck in everybody's heads, everybody's head. And now we're like like I said, we're probably get hate mail for it. But hey, uh, for you out there, feel free to share on the Facebook page because that's the only thing I ha I can look at um, what your top music from video games are. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you guys want to share your thoughts on this, please go to our Facebook page, you know, facebook.com slash retro gamers podcast. Um, you can also if you want to uh, check us out on Instagram or Twitter, you can uh, you can check us out there as well and comment on what you think your favorite uh, or tell us what your favorite um, music is there. You can get us on Instagram at retro gamers podcast. You can hit us up on Twitter at uh, retro gamers pod. Um, and of course, if you have any questions for us, you can always email us, email at the retrogamers.com. And I think, um, Charlie, I think that's, uh, I think that's it for this music themed episode of the Retro Gamers podcast. Uh, what, do, what do you think? Are we ready to close this out? I'm ready to close this out. Um, thank you for having me once again. It was definitely an, an enjoyable episode to discuss. Um, and, you know, music suits the savage beast. That it does, and it definitely suits me as well. And Charlie, I can't thank you enough for joining me this week. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. And an extra special pleasure because for the first time in 173 episodes, it's just you and me. We've never done yeah. that before. Hey, it's always fun no matter what. I it's, it's, it's nice to be able to nerd out among fellow nerds. Yes, and uh, as always, you are, you are welcome to come back again in the future. Uh, maybe next time Larry will be able to join us. Um, but that concludes this week's episode. Thank you again, and thank you guys for listening and watching, and we will catch you next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast. Mm -hmm.